Okay, still under the letter S, we're doing education. And we're starting with Jared Sparks. He was born a dirt poor farmer in Connecticut. Well, he was born to the family of a dirt poor farmer. And in his life, he was a carpenter, carpenter's apprentice, a school teacher, a Harvard tutor, owner and editor of two magazines, a Unitarian minister, chaplain for the US House of Representatives, a professor of history, and president of Harvard College. Say what you will, America really is a land of opportunity. His most important work in two volumes was The Writings of George Washington. He also wrote a two volume Life of George Washington, plus works on Benjamin Franklin, James Madison, and other American topics. His work was popular and influential. Nowadays, he is criticized somewhat as being too kind, leaving out the uncomplimentary details. Uh, Jared was there purely by coincidence on a very historic occasion. At his, it was at his ordination ceremony in 1819 that William Ellery Channing gave his famous Baltimore sermon, the one that defined American Unitarianism. Thomas Jefferson Sawyer. It's Tom Sawyer. But as far as I know, Mark Twain, born in 1835, never met our Tom Sawyer. Our Thomas was also born to a poor farm family, the seventh of 10 children. He got a BA and MA at Middlebury College in his native Vermont. He became a Universalist minister right after graduation, even though he had not studied theology. Ironically, Thomas's lack of training made him a big fan of divinity schools. He is credited as the driving force in creating Tufts College in Greater Boston and St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York. Both became non-sectarian schools with attached universalist theological schools. Liza Jane Reed Sunderland was an excellent teacher, first in high schools and later in Bible study classes. She earned a PhD from the University of Michigan in 1892 at age 53 for a dissertation on Kant and Hegel. She was the wife of a minister in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The pair converted from Baptist to Unitarian in their 30s, and Eliza's Bible study classes get credit for many Unitarian converts in the Midwest. In 1893, Eliza spoke in Chicago at the first World Parliament of Religions and got a standing ovation from an audience of 3,000. The World Parliament is still around, and well, you probably know that because it was held in Toronto in 2018. George Dinsmore Stoddard was raised Methodist and converted to Unitarian as an adult. He served, served in World War I and then studied child psychology at the University of Paris. He taught psychology and education at the University of Iowa. I really enjoyed a paper that George published in 1932 on what school children learn and retain by going to the movies. He spent hundreds of dollars over many years sending kids to the movies at five cents a head. In his uh, paper, George mentions a big design problem that his study had when theaters switched from silent to talkies, which he calls an act of God. In 1942, he became president of the University of the State of New York. Now that is a misleading name. USNY is an arm of the government. It licenses all schools in New York State from nursery schools to universities, including the State University of New York, which is a completely different institution. In 1946, he was chairman of the United States Education Mission to Japan. He was assigned to General MacArthur to work on a new education system for Japan. Emperor Hirohito also asked George to find a tutor for Prince Akihito. Akihito, who was 12 at the time, was Emperor of Japan until his abdication for reasons of health in 2019. Then George spent seven tough years as president of the University of Illinois. He lobbied for public educational TV, 
which his opponents in the McCarthy era saw as socialism. The campus also had leftist student unrest. George was fired in 1953 for a disagreement over funding of Krebiosin, a trial anti-cancer drug, but George thought he was really fired for his involvement in that pinko socialist organization, UNESCO. The ACLU honored him in 1954 for resisting political interference, even when it meant dismissal. His favorite saying was, we are free in all respects, save one. We are not free to tolerate the destruction of our freedom. He spent 14 years as a professor and administrator at NYU, which is not to be confused with USNY or SUNY. And he spent a couple of years at Long Island University working with their campus in Brooklyn. After retirement, he spent time as an educational advisor in East Africa. You know, I originally thought I'd give George one paragraph, but I found I really liked his story, and I hope you did too. Dorothy Tilden Spurl was born in Brooklyn, New York. After age 10, she lived in Illinois because her father was president of Lombard College. Daddy graduated from Lombard three years before it was killed off by the Great Depression in 1930. Its charter was transferred to a Unitarian seminary, Medville Theological School. Medville was very happy to do the necessary paperwork because Lombard was one of only three schools in Illinois with tax exempt status. And now Medville Lombard Theological School has that status. Dottie married a minister in 1929 and moved to Massachusetts. She became a leading religious educator and an ordained universalist minister herself. The well-known Unitarian RE developer, Sophia Faz, was impressed by her course on the Golden Bough about mythology. The two collaborated on a course called Beginnings of Life and Death. After Unitarians and Universalists merged, Dorothy became a full-time curriculum editor at the UUA. Uh, Dottie developed hands, a curriculum that progresses from animal hands to human hands to human minds. She officially retired in 1973, but kept working until a broken hip slowed her down 20 years later in 1993. A quote from Dorothy, our religious education is religious if we can help our children see the awe and wonder of the immensity of the universe of which they are a part, and yet sense an equal awe and wonder about the majesty of man, by which she meant people. Man who has struggled against odds and reached his present position and who can, we have faith, go on to make his planet a better place than ever it has been, to sense the struggle and feel one, and, and feel one has to meet it, is basic to religious education. One more to go. Most of my stories are about the Unitarian half of UU, but for some reason the letter S is full of Universalists. St. Lawrence University is another. It was founded in 1856 as a Universalist seminary. As a matter of fact, that happened just a, just a few minutes ago <laughs> when we were covering Agents of Change. Uh, today it's a liberal arts college. No one even, never mind, you know when we covered it. Uh, today it's a liberal arts college with about 2,500 students and it's in Canton, New York. St. Lawrence has always been co-ed. One of its students was Olympia Brown, the first woman to graduate from an established theological school. The end. Arg! Still can't find the darn stop button.